Hey there, game developers. It's me, Titan Hex. I am here with an extended tutorial of conditional branches. So, last time we were going over conditional branches, there was some information that I couldn't add because there's just a time constraint and eventually the, the video would have ended up being a good 30 to 40 minutes long, uh, which is definitely more than what I, I typically aim for. So we're gonna do an extended tutorial on conditional branches and these are things that you should know, uh, but they're kind of an ex, um, they're, they're a little, they make things a little more advanced. You can uh, possibly learn these on your own, but going through them here really will help expedite your ability to make complex and amazing systems. So that's where we're going with this. And we're gonna begin by opening a new condition, which I've already done here and going into your contents and adding a new event command. So the new event command that you want is here in conditional branch. So we're gonna learn how to create an end conditional branch. I'm gonna start by adding a conditional branch that checks if Harold is in the party. So now after checking if Harold is in the party, let's say we wanna create a condition that says if Harold and Therese is in the party, uh, we will see the text box, my two favorite people are Harold and Therese. So how do we create this end statement, this Harold and Therese? If Harold and Therese are in the party, I want to say this. Uh, obviously, we can't go into our event and add Harold and Therese. So we have to come up with some logical way to do that. Normally, in scripting, there is the if statement, which is very similar to what we have created here in a conditional branch. And it allows us to just type end into it. So we could say, if Harold and Therese are in the party, show this text. Unfortunately, we don't have um, scripting knowledge and we need to come up with another way. So the way we create end statements inside of these conditional branches is we put another conditional branch inside of the conditional branch we just made that has the other condition that we want. So if Harold is in the party and if Therese is in the party, we'll show text, Harold and Therese are my two favorite people. Awesome. So the way it works is However many, uh, we just add as many conditional branches inside of each other to meet the end conditions we want. So we could say if Harold and Therese and Marsha is in the party, and then at the la on the last conditional branch, we put in what we want to have happen. Harold, Marsha, and Therese are my three favorite people. There. So now it's going to say that when we have all three of these people in our party. It's always the last conditional branch is the one that you're going to put. Um, it's the one that you're going to put the condition in or well, what you want to have happen in. So these three conditional branches now create an end statement. If Harold is in the party, if Therese, and if Therese is in the party, and if Marsha is in the party. That's how conditional branches work inside of each other. So as you put more conditional branches inside of each other, the more the end statement must be reached. All three conditions must be met in order for this final one to happen. And that's that's just how these if, if or these conditional branches sort of pile inside each other and they create this end statement. So there's another statement that we should tackle. And that one is the or conditional branches. Let's say if we want it to do something, if Harold or Therese or Marsha is in the party. So we wanted to say something if any of these three are in the party. How do we do that then? Uh, so we know how to do the end conditional branch. We just put them inside each other. Now we have to learn how to do the or conditional branch. So what we do is we edit this conditional branch and we add an else branch. Now inside of the else statement, 
we create another conditional branch with the other statement that we want. So if Harold is in the party, or Therese is in the party, and then another, uh, until we are done creating the whole or state, the or set of conditional branches. So we're going to add Therese as the, or Marsha as the last conditional branch. And because I'm not going any deeper, I'm not going to create the last else branch with it. So if Harold is in the party, else or otherwise, if Therese is in the party, otherwise, if Marsha is in the party. So now we have created this or statement. If Harold is in the party, or if Therese is in the party, or if Marsha is in the party. Then we will show the text. Harold, Marsha, and Therese. Therese. As long as these people are near me, I'm safe. Uh, let's make it a little, <laughs> let's make it a little bit more, uh, I'm going to make it a little bit more Harold or threes. As long as one of these, as long as one of these people are near me, I'm safe. Now, if we wanted to, of course, create something uh, else. So we can always create a final else if we wanted to and then put inside that text what happens if none of those conditions are met. So if none of those conditions are met, we're going to put I don't feel safe. So we can still add that final else branch. It's only when you put a conditional branch inside of an else statement does that statement become an or statement. So uh, if Harold is in the party or if Therese is in the party, because we created an, a conditional branch inside of the else, uh, it now becomes an or statement here. And then inside of this or statement, um, the same thing works with ends whenever you put one, like I could turn this into, if Harold is in the party and Therese is in the party, or if Marsha is in the party. So it would only work if Harold and Therese is in the party or if Marsha is in the party. And of course I could alter that by throwing it in here. And now I have the end statement. If Harold and Therese and Marsha is in the party, then do this. Otherwise, doesn't work. So uh, that's just sort of how it this whole thing will play out. Those, this is basically how we create these complex compound um, conditional branches. It's important that you know this so that if you ever have to open up your events and debug them, you can look at this and just think logically through it using in your language. You can use, I can look at this and say, if Harold is in the party or if the, Therese is in the party, or if Marsha is in the party, this is going to happen. Otherwise, this is going to happen. So just keep that in mind. Um, this is sort of the extended version of how to create more complex conditional branches. And this can allow you to do some complex systems or cool little things. Um, we can create all sorts of different scenarios. This would be good for uh, button combos. So if I had a um conditional branch that would use th that would check to see if okay or the shift button is being pressed and the hmm the okay button is being pressed you can do something um you can change a variable so you can make something go up um add one so you can do a whole bunch of things uh, using these ad advanced conditional branches. So keep that in mind, and you should be able to create an awesome system using these conditional branches. Um, you should be able to debug them using the uh, logic that I've shown you. So with all that, thank you, and I will see you 
in the next tutorial. As always, like, comment, subscribe, show your support, tell me a little bit about your games, what you're looking forward to, what tutorials you want to see. Uh, just help me out, and I will try my best to help you out as well. So thank you.